Witches, I'm back doing the 31 Days of Tarot Challenge uh, that Ethne started. She did it again. She did it last year and now she's doing it this year. So thank you, Ethne, for doing this again because it's a lot of fun and it's really awesome. So I'm going to do not one every day, but one every week. So we're on the third. So three questions. The first was um, pulling a card about a theme and then also a lesson for the year. And then... Um, two and three were your top five tarot and your top five oracle. I've already done a top five tarot and oracle video, so I'll leave that. And for the lesson, I already did kind of a card of the year, so I'm going to go through what that was and also talk about some of the decks that I'm using this year for like my personal daily draws. Um, I just thought I would, you know, give a little insight into that. So I work with the Leonie Dawson Shining Year Workbooks which has a part in there where you uh, draw a card for each month of the year. And I use for the life workbook, the Druid um, Animal Oracle. That's what it looks like there. So for my personal life, just uh, a card each month, kind of what animal energy to work with. I really love this deck. I've had this deck for years and years and I just, I love it. I think it's a wonderful, wonderful deck. I really like the idea of having an animal energy to work with each month. There's all birds there. I'm getting, oh, there's a, there's a, oh, there's a cow. Playing cards. It's a frog. Um, so that's what I used for each month. And then I also have the Biz Workbook. So I use the Messages from Your Animal Spirit Guides by Stephen Farmer for my business one. So I kind of have like two animals of the month, but one's more like specifically for business where one, the other one's more general. This one's a bit different, more abstract looking. So um, I use those for my kind of yearly forecast reading and I like it because it's not really predictive. It's just more sort of like what energies you're going to need for that month. So those are the ones I use there. So I kind of like that the animal, I actually really wanted to use like a plant deck, but I wanted the Druid um, plant oracle, but it's really hard to find super expensive because it's out of print. So I just thought I'll go with two animal ones this year. And then for, um, on my altar here, I have like um, a card for the lunar month, a card for the year, and then I also have a weekly and daily card. Now, last year for daily draws, I was using the Wisdom of the Oracle, which I really love. It is a wonderful deck, but I kind of felt like I need to change it up for the new year. And I really like Colette Baron reeds decks. Like I was using the Avalon Oracle for years and years as my daily draw. And then I went to the map in 2015 and then Wisdom of the Oracle for 2016. So I thought, well, the only one I don't have is Wisdom of the Hidden Realms. So I ordered it, but I don't really feel a super strong connection with this, at least not right now. And I, I just wasn't quite feeling it. And then I had put this other deck aside into kind of my trade pile. And somebody was talking about it and I don't know why, but I just thought this is the deck I need for 2017 and it is the Energy Oracle Cards by uh, Sandra Ann Taylor. So not a Colette Baron Reed deck, but it has a similar sort of vibe to it, but I like that it is kind of light and dark. So you have like cards like this, like Envy. Thinking man. Some of the cards admittedly are a bit cheesy. I think I did a re opening before review of it. And then you've got Archangels and Chakras in here. Uh, but I like that it's got a variety of things. Adjacent possibilities. So this is a deck that I'm using for my daily draws for 2017. And again, it's kind of about what energy you're working with during the day and I like that it's got you know it's not all super crazy positive it's got like lots of different types of energy with it but even if you get a card that seems negative like envy it's really about thinking like how is that uh, how is that affecting my life and how I can I turn it into a positive or how can I learn something from this so that's the deck I'm using for my daily draws this year and then for weekly draws last year 
I used the Messenger Oracle. I always like to use like a fae or a fairy-like deck for my weekly draws. I find the weekly draw gives me more of a creative type theme. And so um, the Messenger Oracle was one that was on my list for a long time. I'm so glad I got it. Just got a beautiful, and I mean, Raven Felon is a wonderful, amazing artist. Just beautiful. So this year, um, again, I wanted something fairy-like, and I decided to go back to an old favorite that I've had for years and years and years, and that is the fairy deck. I think it's called the, it's the fairy deck, the fairy oracle by Brian Froud. This is probably the most fairy deck, fairy-like, fae-like deck I have. There's lots of fairy decks I have, fairy-themed. But this has like a wildness and just a beautiful energy to it. And again, it's got both light and shadow. And it's just a lovely, lovely magical deck. So this leads me to my lunar month, uh, lunar, how do you call it? Like my monthly draw, but it's like for the lunar month. And my annual draw. And what I do for these is I choose um, a deity to work with for the year and then also deities to work with each lunar month. And I like to let the universe pick for me. So I have um, six decks that are deity based, like god and goddess type decks. And so I'll roll a dice. I've labeled them one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, they are the goddess oracle, um, the ascended masters oracle, the goddess guidance oracle by Doreen Virtue, those two, the gods and titans and goddesses and sirens deck, and then the mythic oracle. So a wide variety of gods and goddesses. Um, and some goddess, uh, goddesses and gods come up in several of the decks, but they might have a slightly different theme to them. So I'll roll the dice and go, okay, it's in this deck, and then I'll shuffle till one like kind of pops out. And that's what I do um, each new moon for each lunar month, and I'll pick a theme for the lunar month. Like for example, uh, this lunar month, I'm it's for me, it falls in my third house. So I'm working on themes of like writing, communication, writing goals that I have. And I pulled Diana, focused intention. So all about making goals, setting them, sticking to them, taking command of your time. So I really was uh, very excited to see that because I thought that was a very pretty direct, pretty direct message of who to work with and what I needed to do. And then I do the same for the year. I actually do it on a January 1st in the morning. Um, and that also becomes my word for the year. If you work with the Leonie Dawson Shining Your Workbooks, you know she gets you to pick a word for the year. And I don't know what that word is until the morning of January 1st. So I was a little trepidatious because 2017, there's a lot of crazy energies going on this year. Politically, things are, you know, who knows what's going to happen. Um, so I was really hoping I didn't get something like fear or, you know, crisis or something like that. But what I got was Kuan Yin Compassion. And I think having a theme like this for the year gave me a lot of comfort. Um, and it's also a pretty strong lesson in I have to treat myself nicer, not be so hard on myself. Um, and by being better to myself, I'm going to be better to others. And, you know, we I think we all have times when we judge others or we um, aren't as compassionate as we could be. And so this is a great reminder to be compassionate with others, but also especially compassionate and kind to myself. Um, so it was pretty interesting to get this as well because um, I decided for January the book that I was reading is the the Tale of the Craft. I probably pronounced that wrong. Um, by Ben and Belle Wen. And I thought this it means like this year I'm really going to be, you know, working with that. But also I think I felt called to look at things um, more again like feng shui and the I Ching and um, Eastern astrology. So this kind of gives me a framework for my practice as well. Last year I got um, Rhiannon as my card and it was from the same deck from the goddesses and sirens deck and I'll see if I can find her Oops. If I can find the card and I don't look over boxes and make a bunch of noise oh there it is 
Rhiannon, self-trust. And this was huge last year. Um, as many of you know, I was on a little driving show called Canada's Worst Driver, and I had to face my fears about driving. I had to learn to face my self-doubt. I had to learn to face my fears and to trust myself. I also had to challenge myself this year um, going traveling by myself. Um, there was lots of things I had to do this, real, this year that really forced me to confront sort of my doubts and fears and how much I trusted myself. It's interesting too, the horse is in there because of obviously driving and traveling. Um, but also too, the last year is kind of focusing on more sort of Celtic type things. And so this year it's telling me obviously I need to focus more on Easter and stuff. So um, the card of the year for me is like a pretty important thing and sort of is a good guidance, not only for what kind of energies I need to work with and what God or goddess I need to work with, but also kind of what framework my passion, my, my, um, the, what word am I looking for? My practice needs to be in. So that was my, this is my theme and my lesson for this year. Um, and I, I think it's a pretty, pretty cool one and a pretty important one. So let me know what you think. Um, if you are making 31 days tarot videos, let me know. I love seeing them. I love seeing what everyone's card for the year is. Uh, just, you know, tarot wise, um, numerologically, my card this year is uh, the lovers. So a lot of balance, uh, making choices based on the heart, making choices in partnership, things like that is a theme for me this year. If you don't know how to calculate your uh, tarot card for the year, Kellyanne Maddox did a video about this, but basically what you do is you take the month you were born in, the day you were born in, and add those up. For example, I'm born August 15th, so eight plus 15 equals 23. And then you add that number to 2017 and for me that comes out as was that 2040 so 2 plus 4 equals 6 so the lovers that's how I figured it out anyway put your comments below like and subscribe thank you for listening to me ramble about cards and I'll see you all next time